Recording. Here are the Philly Hockey Guys, Andy Robb and Ken Prell. What is this? What do you mean, what is this? Is this yes. is from Dick Tracy? Absolutely. No, it's not good. No, we're not, we're not doing that. What today. the hell are you doing? We're not doing that. Did you just mess with my intro? Yes. No, I need more. Well, I'm sorry. No. It, it, it's not. Oh, my God. More. 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 Wow. Now that's how you open a show. Oh, my God. It, it, I can't believe you would do that. Is Dick Tracy paying us for that? I was watching that last night. It's not like I have NHL playoffs to watch. We're going to get sued by Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Philly Hockey Guys podcast. That was, wow, I can't say we've ever cut off an intro before. This may be the last show because I will no! never put up with this again. All right. I'm Andy Robb. Uh, Ken Burrell. Thanks a lot for uh, joining us. Thanks for tuning in, no matter where you're listening from. Certainly appreciate it. So, episode 61. Yeah, so the playoffs. Flyers are not in it, obviously. That's a fact. I, uh, I have not watched one second, one minute, nothing of the NHL some, playoffs. There's been I, some I don't care. Good games. I don't care. You know what I want to watch? More! Stop it. <sighs> well, I mean, uh, You're killing me here. San Jose winning uh, 7 nothing last night. Uh, that was pretty awesome against Edmonton. Good for them. Um, and, hey, Columbus, they're, they're still alive, right? Oh, they finally show up for a yeah, game? Yeah, I know. Seriously. <laughs> Maybe Hartnell's finally going to back up all, all the smack talking that he's been doing over the past uh, a couple days. You know what? That would be tremendous, though, if they could come back and do a— uh, it's, it's been a very popular uh, comment around our office. The reverse sweep. So you've never you haven't watched any playoff games at all. No, I haven't watched any. I haven't watched a second of the. NFL I've watched. Playoffs. I've only watched a few. I kind of have dialed it back as uh, as opposed to last year. Can I honestly say I haven't watched any sports since the Flyers? Uh, I've watched very little of the Phillies so far, and. Um, well, the Sixers didn't make the uh, yeah. The Sixers the, didn't you know, make the I mean, playoffs, but I've watched no NBA playoffs. I, I just really don't care. And we, you know what? We got the NFL draft coming up in a week. I'm not even, I'm not even super pumped about that either. I don't. I, I'm not the kind of person that sits around and watches the NFL draft for two days. I, I just, I don't see the point. You know, ever since, I'll just check online. Ever since they moved it, remember, it used to be all day Saturday and all day Sunday. Yeah, oh, man, that used to be awesome. Now they do it on. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday. So I don't. It's, I don't have time for it. It's too much. So, um, so I'm I'm really kind of detached from sports altogether, except for you know Flyers and keeping up with uh, some of the off season moves that they've uh, uh, started to make and uh, some of the off season press conferences and also some of the stuff that uh, you know the Phantoms also they're they're in the uh, they're in the playoffs uh, in the AHL so far looking pretty good too. Mm-hmm. And there was uh, some uh, some breaking news uh, from that. Uh, Philippe Myers is going to be uh, joining the Phantoms since uh, his team was eliminated. And uh, Hart just joined the uh, the Phantoms. Yeah, Carter well. Hart. Yeah, yeah, because well, Stolarz sustaining a, a season-ending injury there. I don't know if we have the time to dedicate to uh, goaltending between Mason if he's coming back or not. Probably not. Neuvarth, who's always hurt, and now Stolarz, who you thought, okay, maybe he can break, come in, but now he's hurt. So going into next year, like I said, I don't think we have the time to really dive into goaltending issues right now. Okay, we'll just brush past it then. Yeah, I think that's what we have to do because I have no idea what the hell this team's going to do. All right, well let's uh, let's get to our our little bit of a season wrap up, I guess, uh, with the uh, Philadelphia Flyers finishing thirty nine, thirty three, and ten with eighty eight points. And before Ken says it, I'll just go ahead and say it: they had ten games that they won in a row, and they didn't make the playoffs. I got you. I'm sorry. Is that good? No, it's not good. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was unclear. I didn't know if that was good or not. And last season they went uh, forty one, twenty seven, fourteen, uh, finished with ninety six points. Uh, so kind of dropping off a little bit uh, this year, and it's the third time in five seasons, of course, that the uh, the Flyers have missed the playoffs. Look at you coming strong with the stats. But how about that? How about that guy? What's his name? Hang on. Um, P- Peter La- Lab Lavilet. Tell you what, Preds are taking it to Chicago right now. Wow. Yeah. Then they. I they, love to say it. That's awesome. They blew him out like five yeah. nothing the other night. Uh, Is really was that the final score of that so. game? Uh, pretty good, impressive. Good for Labby. <sighs> I still think that they gave up on him too. So getting rid of him was not the answer. 
But now, I mean, looking back at the Flyer season, I mean, you can go back to really two months, October and February. It kind of killed them. I think they had nine points in both of those months. Yeah, that's so that's not going to get the job done. And then you're you're sitting back and you're just looking and why you're not in the playoffs. Just one of those months, if you you know actually play competent hockey, they probably get in. And when you can't score, I mean, this team again was in the uh, bottom ten of the NHL in scoring. So I mean, you're not going to get to the playoffs that way. There, there are. Uh, I, I know. I see a lot of people. You want to look, and I think you're one of them that are looking to the future and are positive. And I'm kind of like that on the back end, looking at the defense, but offensively, whew, I don't. I don't know what what changes are going to be made next year or where the scoring comes from, but. That's got to be the real scary part for uh, Ron Hextall right now. How do you improve the scoring next year? Well, clearly, yeah, the sc- scoring <laughs> has to improve. I don't even know if you don't even need to listen to us to know that. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious that that is something. That's a facet of this team that that needs to change quickly uh, before next year. And I and I think you know Hextall kind of realizes that, and they, and they made their first major change to the coaching staff. I mean, Dave Hextall is going to stay around, but. Uh, power play coach and specialist Joey Mullen. Uh, he's not going to have his contract uh, renewed. A little bit surprised by that, considering how, you know, December when they had that 10 game winning streak, the power play was number one in the NHL. They had everything working on all full cylinders. And then the wheels fell off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the second half, they went uh, five for 50 in March alone and ended up finishing up the season 14th in, uh, on the power play. I'm real disappointed. Yeah, I that's... guess it is. Yikes! Um, so, uh, so it looks like the Flyers will have a new man uh, heading up the uh, the power play. So, hopefully, that'll increase some of the scoring next year. And on the other end, the penalty kill looks like uh, Lappy's coming back. Yeah, thoughts on that? Uh, I don't get it. Why? He's been the uh, the special teams coach, the penalty kill coach for the last three years, and they, the Flyers have finished in the bottom ten every season. I, I understand your defense is you know hasn't been that great at the same time. Maybe they have. Uh, faith in him to rebuild this uh, penalty kill with some of the young guys coming up on the back end next year. Uh, uh, so, all right, if we want to give him another season, that's fine. But if they finish in the bottom ten again next year, you, you got to. Well, I think <laughs> your chances are you're probably going to miss the playoffs again. Yeah, and then it's going to be a complete overhaul. Okay, so you're you're kind of questioning it, but at the same time, you see the potential and you think that it might. I'm I'm out. willing to keep uh, Lappy on the uh, on the coaching staff because the guy did take a puck to the face. Oh yeah, well who can forget that? <laughs> uh, uh, not <laughs> not once, but twice. <laughs> I mean, so uh, the guy always gave his his all out there, and you know maybe maybe that's what he needs some of these players to start doing. Is... Well, we don't have any audio of when he did that commercial when they wanted to donate the shoes. If you're having a bad day. Yeah. And you need to pick me up. Find that video the on YouTube. Of that. Oh my God, are they hilarious? Like his teeth are like that was like a few. He days was waiting. He was after... waiting for his teeth to come in. Yeah, <laughs> his and, new teeth. And he was like whist- <laughs> whistling. I mean, he really sounded like <laughs> when he's like talking. It's pretty good. The, out- the outtakes yep. for that is, is absolutely, pretty great. absolutely. So I mean, I've always been a fan of his. I mean, the dude. I mean, yeah, the guy's the guy is an Iron Man. Oh and... yeah, yeah. But the results have to you know have to start showing up on the ice. I mean, you can't just keep a guy on your coaching staff because he was a hell of a player for you at right, one time. Right, right. And I think that's the problem with that the Flyers organization sometimes runs into is too much loyalty. Well, and it's interesting that you bring that up. Um, they've kind of loosely mentioned the fact that uh, when in, in regards to the power play, uh, they're going to go with an outside hire. That's what they're. That's what they're aiming. Yeah, no, to do, I hope so. Yeah, uh, when they when they kind of revamp uh, the uh, the coaching staff for the next season, you need a fresh perspective every once in a while, and I yes. think that you know uh, you know hopefully that I can agree with. Yeah, hopefully that that does show up next year. Um, you want to get to some of the uh, end of the season uh, press conference? A couple yeah, of, some we of got those, a couple sounders. Before we get to those sounders, um, locker room clean out day. Delzato he pretty much said in so many words he doesn't expect. Uh, himself to be returning uh, to the Flyers this season. I, I know, I know you like him, and I know he uh, over the past couple of years has kind of shown you know some some flashes of you know that he can be a, he wasn't a pretty scratched. pretty decent player in the NHL. But when you have so many young guys 
who, you know, even when they came up at the end of the year, right. um, that showed they belong in the NHL, that mm-hmm. they can play in the NHL, you're not going to spend $4 million to bring back Delzato when you have the young guys. So, yeah, as much as I hate to see him go, it's time. And you're right, he was scratched a lot. Yeah. I don't know if that was 100% necessary or if he deserved it, but the fact was he was scratched. Well, he, he also handled things um with a lot of class, so you know. Yeah. Obviously, I, I I do like the way I like his approach. I like the I like how he's grown, uh, not just as a player but as a person. I mean, he's a different person than than he was uh, when he played and was drafted by the Rangers. Um, so you know, I wish him the best of luck. Just just don't go to Pittsburgh. No. <laughs> and uh, Schultz is not going to be back next year. Looks like he's probably going to end up retiring. You you kind of look at what you know Hextall and you know looking forward to next year. And basically what they're looking at, and it's basically going to be sticking with the same plan. We're not deviating from what I told you guys. You're probably getting sick of hearing it two and a half, three, two and a half years ago. We're, we're building. We're building slowly. But that doesn't mean today doesn't mean something. It does. Uh, I think most of our moves at this point right now, I say, we're, are going to come internally. So right there, I kind of lead you to the, the young guys are yeah. finally, finally going to get their chance at the NHL. There, there's a good degree of things to be excited about. Especially on the defensive side. Yeah. And if you got Lindblom joining the team uh, next year, they might expect him to make the team out of camp. I mean, here's the thing. If he if he does make the team, uh, I hope they don't treat him the way they treated Konechny this year and, you know, jerk him around from line to line, make him a healthy scratch, uh, basically destroy the guy's confidence. And that's what really... I really have my question marks about moving forward with Dave Haxtell as the head coach. I know it's only been two seasons, but, man, that was a big step backwards this year, not making the playoffs and not even really being close to making the playoffs. And it was good to see, really, in Haxtell's day after press conference, you know, a little frustration out of him. And we took a step back this year. And and, and are we disappointed? Damn rights. We are. And, and are we happy? No, we're not. You sit down last night and start watching playoff games. And you get pissed off. I would not want to be uh, in the same living room as him. I think that's a loud and clear message that uh, this isn't going to be acceptable anymore. And you better make the playoffs next year and you better make some noise. Yeah, I mean, they they absolutely should be expected to make the playoffs. I mean, it's like you said on the last episode of the show, and if you haven't heard it, uh, check it out on iTunes, SoundCloud, all that stuff. It's an expectation for this team to always be in the playoffs. Are you agreeing with what I said in the last episode? (laughs) Well, I've I've always agreed with that. It's a team that, you know, makes the playoff nine out of every ten years. Of course, you expect the Flyers to be in the playoffs. There's, There's no doubt about it. They're one of those teams that are always in. And it's like I said probably a long time ago. But it's like, even if we're not going to win the Stanley Cup this year, we're going to make it really hard for you to do it as well if you come up against us and if you come and if you come into town. I see, none, none of that really does anything for me anymore. It's over 40 years now without a cup. Uh, it, it's time for, for this team to, you know, to step up and be a real player. I mean, because really, I, when you look at the landscape of Philadelphia sports, they're the only real hope that I have for any kind of championship within the next five to ten years. So, not the Eagles? Who's playing defense for the Eagles? They're going to have to outscore everybody, you know, 48-45. Um, it's going to make for some exciting uh, Sundays, I think, this uh, this football season. But uh, does, it, does it win a Super Bowl or even get get them to the playoffs? I don't know, and their schedule's not that easy this year either. Yeah, they just they just kind of really okay. We're turning into yeah, I know, yeah, let's yeah. Not, let's not do <laughs> Philly that. football guys. Hey guys, hey. Carson Lance. <laughs> but no, back to hockey. I, I again, I think you know the Flyers are are that team that that is probably they're the, the ones closest. that are closest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you'll find anybody that'll really disagree with that statement that the Flyers are the ones that are closest in line to to you know seriously contend. But, you know, it's like we just talked about some of those aspects of their game have to have to change, including the scoring and, and the penalty kill. Those those are things that need absolute tuning during the off season. Well, let's hear uh, what the head coach had to say as he gave his uh, season wrap up press conference. Um, he's in the con- he's in showing the that with from in from income. Thank you guys for being here tonight. <laughs> I mean, he's just a mess. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Haxtell. Why does I he really... sound like Sean Spicer? Oh, did I pull the wrong audio? Was that? I'm oh, pretty sure that's Sean. Uh, you Spicer. know what? I really couldn't tell because both sound clueless. So, wow. <laughs> what? 
Wow. That's a little harsh, wouldn't you think? What, I shouldn't talk about Sean Spicer that way? No, you know oh. what I mean. <laughs> the team didn't make the playoffs. And that's, but that's, that, that's not necessarily. Don't, don't, don't give me it's not his fault. How, I, Come on, tell me. Tell me how it's not his fault. He's the head coach. Not, Buck he's not the one out there playing. Right. Okay, fine. All right. It's not his fault then. It's obviously the captain's fault then, Giroux. Speaking of which, um, Giroux addressed uh, the media as well. This is actually really old. The, this is real Giroux. I don't trust you. <laughs> I don't. I no. don't even know what this to do. This is real. This is 100% this real. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. Wait. Okay. With that. <laughs> ah, with that. That. Yep. See. <laughs> that sounds like Drew. All right. Fine. Let's let's hear what uh, let's hear what the captain had to say. Ah, uh, frustrating. I think uh, uh, your mind wants to do something, but your body doesn't do it. It's it, it's frustrating. And <coughs> excuses. Oof. You all right? Yeah. Uh, Do you need a, it's, it's allergies. Ah. Excuses. Yeah. Excuse me. Woof. Oh. Hey, you need a tissue? Yes, please. <laughs> excuses. Okay. Let's... Oh. Let's, God, you need to take yourself a. Uh, I know, I gotta get some. <laughs> but uh, I mean, sir, enough with the jokes, though. But I'm not the only one who thinks that Giroux needs to get out of here. WIP Morning Show did a Twitter poll. Sixty three percent agree with. Wait me. a minute they they took a they took a second to not talk about the Eagles. First, wow. of, first of all, the, the morning show wow. does talk a lot of hockey. They have Jonesy part of that morning show and Morgani. So there is actually a lot of hockey knowledge on the WIP morning show. I don't buy that. I don't believe it. I think it's nonsense. <laughs> anyway, but uh, see, I'm not alone. 63%. See, I, I, and I know it's going to be tough because he's got the no movement clause, but the guy's not the cat. He's not a captain. He's lost more than a step. <sighs> what? Wow. I, I'm not saying anything. He's not a captain. Look at the stats. The stats the stats back it up. He's been the captain. He started he took over as captain in 2012-2013 season. That was the uh, shortened season. They finished in 4th in the Atlantic Division, missed the playoffs. Next year they finished 3rd, made the playoffs. The next year right back to the same thing, this time finishing 6th in the Metropolitan. Uh Metro- missed, Metropolitan? Metropolitan the missed the playoffs. <laughs> then they get in, they sneak in last year when they were 5th in the Metropolitan. No, shut up. <laughs> They were fifth and snuck in, and then this year they were sixth and, and missed the playoffs. Is that the work of a captain? And don't give me, oh, it's got to be the players around them. I wasn't going to say that. Well, that's usually your 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 go to is uh, just blame everybody except the coach or the captain. It's a bunch of garbage, and not to mention Giroux, he's becoming a coach killer. This is the third coach he's been on since since he was named captain. Yes, he murdered Craig Berube. That's why you haven't seen him. Obviously, Lavi is not the reason, is not a bad coach. Look what he's doing in the playoffs right now. I still say, yeah, I still say getting rid of him was a mistake. Should have kept Lavi and traded Giroux way back when. I think he played his best underneath Lavi. Well, remember, Lavi's the one who called him the best player in the world. That's right. Yeah. How did Giroux repay him? By getting him fired. (laughs) Yeah, like Because he's a coach killer. Speaking of uh, speaking of players that might have an influence with coaches being fired, we've got breaking news. Breaking news coming What's out happening? of the NHL, uh, going up to Buffalo. The the oh, Sabers, that's your team. That's the your other team. Sabers have fired Murray, their GM, and Dan Bylsma today. Wow! And there was a rumor going around, I believe, yesterday that they said that uh, Eichel had some influence on it, that he wouldn't extend as long as Bilesmo was still coach, and uh, very weird situation, uh, wh- what that means with, with, with both of them being gone. I mean, well, they haven't made the playoffs now, and I guess it's four, four straight seasons since uh, Murray's uh, taken over as his tenure as, uh, as general manager. So it's like kind of weird that, like, the article came out with like the rumor about you know Jack Eichel not being pleased with the way the teams run, and then less than twenty four hours later, they're both gone. Tim Murray, that Dwight Schrute looking dude. <laughs> well, I mean, well, that's what happens in pro sports, especially when you get superstars. They're the ones who run the team. Man, that must be a. I mean, if if that's true though with Eichel, and then you have like a Vander Kane in that locker room, what a toxic environment that could be. Well, really, has Evander Kane ever really fit into any locker room? No, he's been in in the NHL. So no, so that's really their own fault for going out and getting him a couple years ago. Now that now that raises interesting questions with that, like the whole thing. Do we see Lindy Ruff return to Buffalo? 
What is this? The Buffalo Hockey Guys podcast? No, I'm just asking a question. I Move think it's to an Buffalo in- if you want to talk Sabres hockey. I just think it's an interesting, it's a very interesting situation that developed no, over 24 what becomes, hours. What becomes an interesting situation is you put this on top of what happened in L.A. Yeah, it was last with, week. with Sutter and Lombardi. That's right. So yeah. now you've got a bunch of uh, Stanley Cup winning coaches out there, and we're still sitting on Johnny College. <laughs> Johnny College. Seriously, now would you would you possibly think about making a move? I'm not the biggest Bilesma fan, but oh god, dude, Dan Bilesma is the most fraudulent coach in the NHL. But Sutter, just I, the I, fact of him potentially dealing with the Philadelphia media. Oh, sure, it'd be entertaining, but I, I don't I don't see that. Two happen. cups, I see, two. I still don't see that. I, I don't see that happening. Maybe no. maybe he's going to go to Buffalo. That could be a possibility. Ooh. You know, when the Sutter news broke, I was tweeting back and forth with uh, Martinez over at uh, over at the Fanatic, Mike Missinelli's uh, producer, to see if, if you know if maybe they move Hextall now because there's that whole you know Hextall had that whole you know came from the the Kings organization. Now I think Hextall's is the guy at least for at least for another season. I mean, I don't. There's there's not going to be a change. Coming in this off season, I, I I highly doubt it. I kind of I kind of agree with you, and even Mar- Martinez uh, kind of said the same thing. He thinks that Sutter's going to probably take a year off. Yeah, but probably. that could work. That could work perfectly into if the Flyers, you know, have another dismal season. Then you could be looking at the next coach of the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, perhaps. But I and think, I'd be all for that. I think now it's it's just a little bit a little bit too soon. But yeah, that's interesting that you brought up the the Kings thing. A part of me almost forgot about that. That yeah. That, so that's now the second tandem of uh gm and coach to be to be let go by a team crazy it just shows there's no loyalty in sports <laughs> whatsoever no matter Man. what you do for a city and an organization it's all about what have you done for me right now <laughs> i mean uh, yeah it's like uh you know job security i mean, like, where, I mean that's gratitude for you where right? were the kings before the last couple years with the cups they were nowhere yeah, it, it, the last exactly. time they were relevant was when Gretzky played for them, and that was yeah a good while ago. Exactly. So yeah, I, that one kind of caught me by surprise. I I would be all right if I never saw Bilesma coaching in the NH, NHL again. The guy doesn't do it for me. He never has. No, I I mean no. I mean, the, I'm telling you, the guy's a fraud. He won a cup in Pittsburgh off of another coach's hard work. I don't know if you can call him a fraud. That other coach couldn't get anything out of his players at the time. Bowsman did come in, shake things up, and then did help lead them to a cup. I and mean, you know he what? does have a ring. That also that also leads to that interesting parallel with this with this Eichel thing and like possibly complaining and raising enough of a stink to get a coach fired. You know, there was those, those rumors going around that you know Crosby was responsible for uh, for Bowsman going as well. That's true. So maybe yeah, maybe he's not the. <laughs> The greatest fit in the locker room as a head coach. Yeah, see, that's what I'm trying to say. Because, like, you know that that was a rumor a couple years ago. Yeah, Yeah. and you know, Crosby had influence in in you know getting a coach fired, and maybe with Terrian as well when Terrian left. That's man, it's like I don't I don't like how like young players can just be like so entitled and have like such a negative attitude about things like okay that. all right so you know we saw we saw that this year that some of the young guys ghost perfect example okay uh had a rough season kind of picked it up a little little bit yeah, of a rough season picked it up towards season. the end of the season and then in his post year wrap up his press conference right there he came out and he basically said that you know what he just went out there and started playing, having fun again, and wasn't worried about getting yelled, yelled at. at. Yeah. I mean, so right there is another, you know, kind of question mark on, on Dave Haxtell, I think. Oh, hey, speaking of which, uh, speaking of Gossip Spare, the time of this podcast, it's uh, the 20th of April, and it is uh, Gossip Spare's 24th birthday today. So, uh, happy birthday. <laughs> The Shane Goss. Where did they get those kids out of here? The kids love the birthdays. So there you go. So uh, hey, yeah, happy birthday, Ghost. Yeah, and uh, well, let's let's uh, now that we're on that, uh, we're on young defensemen. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about a few seconds to talk about uh, a young guy who had really a great great first season. Uh, one Ivan Provorov. Yeah, about well, of course, uh, winner of the Barry Ashby Award for uh, Flyers' top defenseman of the year. Kind of amazing, and, and not to mention... Very impressive. Uh, I mean, he played all 82 games, uh, led the Flyers in ice time as a rookie. 
as a rookie, and it yeah. was a franchise rookie record. Oh, almost 22 minutes of ice time a night. That's crazy. I mean, there's now there's the there's a point where you can kind of see a silver lining when it comes to like the young guys. Like Haxel gave him a lot of ice time. Well, he gave Provorov a lot, a lot of chances to to get out there and 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 make something happen. I will give you that. I mean, he did let him go out there and make. And, but it's the other guys, you know, like a Konechny, like uh, like Ghost, you know. I mean, making those guys healthy scratches at times. So you know, those 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 little decisions, you know, the, the world didn't end, and you know, they seem to. Well, the world did rebound. end. This team didn't make the playoffs. They seem to rebound, <laughs> you know, in their in their own games respectively. I mean, Konechny had a wow, he had a great season too. Konechny had a great season. He was benched. He was a healthy scratch a lot of the year. And bounced around. He ended up on the fourth line. I think he could have had a great season if there was a better coach. You know who else I liked? Jordan Wheel. Talk about him for a second. Another guy who was buried in the AHL who they didn't want to bring up for the longest time. But when he did. Wow. Yeah, when they did. look When he he has that chance. Look what he could do. I don't know. Maybe if you would have brought him up a month or so earlier, you'd be playing right now. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I, I, mm-hmm. I know I keep sounding like I'm blaming Dave Haxall for everything here, but that no. goes back to Hexy as well. What did you say? I said that goes back <laughs> to Ron Hexall as well. <laughs> I guess you could say some of the players got hung out to Canada Drive. <laughs> All right, that's it. No more jokes. That was terrible. Yeah, stop with the jokes. Uh, People want stats. Wayne Simmons. Let's talk about him for this season. Well, he was the all-star MVP. One of his best seasons, I think, that yeah. he's had in his time that he's been with the Philadelphia Flyers. Another guy, though, I mean, you look at his stats, a lot of, you know, where he uh, kind of dominated on the power play, a lot like uh, Braden Shen. So you like to see a little bit more out of those guys five on five because that's where scoring's got to increase. He's one of the best players in the league just being in front of the net. Like, his oh, presence is just... Uh, you don't see players like that very no. often. It's and, rare. And he's a guy who gets in other players' faces, can back it up. He's always, uh, you know, talking with the refs. That's the guy who should be the captain of this team. He's already become the face of the Flyers. I've mentioned this several times over the past couple of shows. But that's the guy I think you need leading this team at this point. Well, I mean, we'll see. You know, we're just going to have to see what happens in the offseason. Um you know, we don't. We well, there's don't. no, there's no doubt. Giroux is back next year. He's yeah. got the no movement clause. <clears throat> Plus, I don't think there's another uh, team in the NHL right now that would even want him with that salary and and the fact that he's got so many years left on his contract and he's a declining player. So I think you're stuck with Giroux. Could be, but you know, all we do is all we do is just you know chat a little hockey. We're not we're not in management, but. Yeah, no, you, but I'm I mean, available. You know what I'm saying? You make a good point. Yeah. I, I understand. I see where you're coming from. I don't want us to kill each other in this in this small radio studio. Just would, think about would. who's going to have to clean it up. If there wasn't stuff recording here right now, I would. <laughs> <laughs> but that would make my Dateline special really short. Yeah. <laughs> And let's also, since we were talking about uh, Simmons and, uh, you know, his scoring and what he's brought to the table, uh, some of the scoring leaders uh, on the five-on-five will give credit where it's due to uh, DAA5250 on Reddit. Yeah. I mean, he he pointed out something that was, you know, uh, that kind of shocked me was that Couturier led the team in five-on-five scoring, 27 points in, in just 66 games. Uh, Voracek was number two on the list with 26, and Konechny, um in just 70 games uh, had 22 points. And our buddy Dylan, um, he uh, had a nice little write-up on the importance of uh, Couturier and how much he improved this year. Uh, kind of the little things that uh, you, you may not notice if you're just looking at the stats, but kind of a deeper dive and a great article on um, – gnghockey.com yeah make sure to to check check that out out. yeah make sure to check that out um because i mean i like the way that uh kuteria is really uh emerging it's 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 kind of like in an unconventional way but i i see him growing even more into next season because he he didn't have a terrible season this year but he's a frustrating player because he always seems to be in the right position to put the puck in the net and it just either goes wide or just a little bit high or just or the goalie gets just a little bit of it, you know. So and but towards the end of the season, you saw him starting to bury those. And I think a lot of that had to do with uh, maybe some of the pressure coming off of him after the trade for uh, Philpula. 
Man, and, and, and that's a player that we've already talked about. Many people have talked about. That's somebody that made an immediate I mean, that was a quality that ad. That was know? a great, you know, I I almost, like, don't even mind Strite being. I actually forgot Strite was on the Penguins. Is Strite even dressing I, for I, the Penguins? I have no idea. I yeah. Like I said, I haven't been watching those yeah. games. Yeah. So. But you see, you remember that video we saw the other day with that uh Penguins fan sucker punch that Columbus fan in <laughs> yes, the back of the head yes. and then just and then ran, ran off. Oh, that's a typical Pens fan. <laughs> they're not, not going to stand there and actually fight. No, well, that sucker punch and run. They follow their captain. Yeah, that series <laughs> could end. Uh, I guess it's. I think it's tonight, right? It's got to be. Is, is it, this is the twentieth. That's that's tonight, and then there's another uh, uh, Washington I, game. I, I, I don't I think. Care. Oh no, Nashville game. Nashville. Yeah, at Lavi. I'll tell you what, if Nashville starts moving along a little bit further and further along in the playoffs, maybe I'll start watching a little. It should. It's still entertaining. What else are you going to do? Watch Dick Tracy again? No, uh, Big Bang Theory tonight. Oh, for Christ. No! It's not good! <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Speaking of... Um... Big Bang Theory? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of things that uh, aren't awful, <laughs> I think it's time once Go again... Go for it. <laughs> The damn kids again. <laughs> I, I really thought like that now that the season was over, we weren't going to have to do this anymore. Oh, you mean the greatest segment ever, <laughs> Weese's Pieces, brought to you by the delicious peanut buttery taste of Weese's Pieces, and uh, you made yourself a fine little graphic that we put on uh, Reddit flyers. You sent that to me last week, and boy, is that hilarious. <laughs> I just pulled it up. There it yep. is. Weese's Pieces. You know, just, just a little Photoshop from uh, just putting uh, Dale Weese's head over top of E.T. Because <laughs> it's a perfect fit. <laughs> And people are saying that we should uh, we should put a watermark on this so the uh, Flyers Twitter doesn't steal this. Well, after they stole goody goody gumdrops a couple weeks ago for, uh, off of you for uh, for Radko Gudis. If they if they I'll say this much: if the Flyers Twitter uses Weese's pieces, I will we will absolutely know for a fact without a shadow of a doubt that they somebody there listens to this show. The Flyers social media team is now scrambling right now. No, don't put it up. Don't if you're put it listening, up. stop stealing our crap. But no. we'll we'll exchange it for some uh, for some free tickets. Absolutely. Yeah. Tickets, jerseys, mini hockey sticks, whatever. Steve Coates' home address. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. give us Coatsy on the show, and you can steal whatever you want. All right, so it's time for Weese's pieces. What do you got about our uh, our uh, our five headed forward friend? Actually, the guy really did pick it up over the yes. Flyers. Uh, final fourteen games, registered six goals, four assists, ten points overall. He was a plus nine rating. Uh, and finished the season playing with Katoria, who we were talking with, and Braden Shen. That line actually looked pretty decent. Got a little bit of a buzz yeah. going on with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he ended the season with uh, eight goals, seven assists uh, in 64 games. So if that's the Dale Weiss we have going forward the next three seasons, I'm okay with the signing. <laughs> You took the words right out of my mouth. That's the exact same thing I was going to say. If that's how he's going to be playing, if he's going to contribute like that yeah. on a regular night to night basis, I'm not. I'm not too. No, bad that'd be, uh, then I'm it becomes a good signing. It. As of right now, yeah. it's a horrible signing. But as of if, right now, it's in the. It's just eh, there, there's a glimmer of hope. Limb, yeah, there's a glimmer of hope. Yeah. Those last 14 games. But gave yeah, us. I mean, you know, got to give credit where credit's due to us because it's because of this that he turned it on. You know what? <laughs> when we had his agent on, oh, the couple, Southern Kentucky the, the Colonel, Southern Kentucky Colonel, yeah, <laughs> I say, sir, my clown will make a fine addition to your here hockey club. <laughs> and and before you know it, he had his own segment on the show, and he started lighting up the scoreboard. Uh, he so must, good he, for Dale Weiss. Yeah, yeah, I say, I say, good for him. And yeah, so to reiterate, you you, you put it so perfectly. I mean, if that's the way that he's going to be playing. From here on out? Yeah. Oh. All right. Another fine segment of Weiss's Pieces. Do we have to play that again? No. Oh, no okay, no. good. Uh, once is enough. <laughs> once is enough. All right. Well, uh, I think that pretty much wraps up uh, this oh, show. Oh, Radko Gudis had a kid. Yes. How about that? Did the kids cheer for that? No, I'm not doing the kids. Bring the kids back in. Bring the kids. All right, fine. Where, where are the kids? No, we're not doing that. Get no. Out. No, come on, kids. Goody had a kid. 
There we go. Well, shut up. Get out of here. <laughs> Damn kid. They always sound the same every time. Yeah. We also do have another piece of news that was just, uh, it's about, uh, it just came out, what, yesterday? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's over 24 hours old. But if you want to hit the breaking news again, you can. I think that broke, I think it's broken. Oh, it's broken news? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Hextall making some more moves on the uh, Canadian team for the uh, Worlds. Yeah, uh, adding uh, who? Well, already uh, Giroux and Simmons were part of the team. Now Couturier and Konechny have been added. Ah, that's yeah. fantastic. So uh, hopefully that gives a little uh, added confidence, a little you know, a little boost to Konechny for next year. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, so Hextall busy remaking Team Canada right now. When do Worlds start? Yeah, uh, probably when they dropped the a puck. No, not the right answer. Not the answer you were looking for. <laughs> it's uh, next month, May. So that's cool. I mean, that's going to be great to see uh, a couple of our boys out there. Uh, yeah, hopefully, Connecting doesn't get isn't a healthy scratch on this team. <laughs> How did I know that that was coming? <laughs> Dave Haxtell's not coaching, right? He's an assistant coach. I'm pretty sure. So they have no chance of winning. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even going to comment on that. <laughs> It's like you're trying to do this on purpose. So. I do. I do my best. <laughs> Anything else, oh fearless leader? Uh, nope. I got nothing. All right. Nothing. So we got another show coming up. Uh, hopefully next week. Is... Sometime over the next couple weeks. I think we need to. We still got to talk some uh, phantoms. Yeah, I, we need to talk some phantoms. I think. I think what we need to do is kind of get like a, almost like a roundtable kind of thing going, like. Several people on. Yeah, we got to right, figure right before like maybe the uh, the expansion draft. Yeah, we got to get a conference call or something going yeah. on with uh... because you have that coming up uh, in June, and then of course you have the regular NHL draft. So there's a lot of exciting things coming up for the Flyers. But yeah. I'd be interested to hear, uh, you know, some of the uh, people that you know we talked to down at the takeover, um, and and a couple other people who we've talked to, uh, maybe Slapshot, maybe we yeah. can bring him back. Yeah, well, actually, uh, Dennis. Uh... Yeah. I was t- I texted Dennis uh, about a week or two ago, so so we can get him back. Maybe Dylan on, and uh, you know maybe we can see who do you protect in the expansion draft. Yeah, it would make for a good discussion. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know we'll be in touch uh, about that, and of course more updates will come about the next show and all that good stuff. Maybe some more of these. You gotta you gotta keep making more of those fun graphics because that Weeses pieces one is is dynamite. Well, I don't have much of a life, so I'm you know I'm sure I'll be able to throw some things together fantastic <laughs> all right well uh, i guess we're gonna have to go ahead and wrap this one up uh, if you are watching the nhl uh, stanley cup playoffs uh, enjoy it as much as you can going for a dart go have you seen have you seen dart man yeah that's <laughs> that's been the biggest story of the nhl playoffs it's so stupid what do you mean it's stupid it's stupid it's a guy going for a dart <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen that that's that's become a uh, that guy's like a walking meme now. He's a legend. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, now that you're on Dart Man, and I thought we were going to wrap things up, you know, I got to say, Toronto kind of playing a little bit of impressive hockey against uh, the Washington Capitals, giving them a little bit of a run for their money. I know. It's kind of fun to see. It, it kind of is. Like the two, <laughs> like two of the biggest choke artist franchise because are really- going against each other. I mean, how many more times can can the Caps choke in the playoffs? You know that he, he uh, Ovechkin's ice time, like in the last game, was like so short, and like Trotz took responsibility for it. He only did like thirty second shifts, and that was it. Yeah, well, why would you want to put one of the best players in the world on the ice? Yeah, especially during the <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't need him available yeah, during yeah. the playoffs. No. <laughs> So, uh, you know, that's probably the key if you want to, you know, take on the Leafs you, you, and, and win that series. You probably should play Ovechkin a little bit more. I'm no head coach, so uh, I don't know. It's a bold strategy, to say the least. What, to to, to limit, not play your best player? Yeah, to, to limit Ovechkin's <laughs> ice time? Like, Christ. So we'll see what happens with that. So, I mean, it's been shaping up for some, you know, some interesting play of hockey. Hell, we had a sweep the other night. The, the Ducks swept out uh, the Calgary Flames. Out of the playoffs. And they might be another sweep, too, if Nashville <laughs> beats Chicago again. That'd be a shame. Two sweeps? That would be crazy. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's not... Uh, it has no effect no skin on my, off my yeah, nose. Exactly. Yeah, so whatever. <laughs> they can all kill each other for all I care. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you're watching the, the playoffs, enjoy, you know, as best you can. But uh, just, you know, keep looking ahead. Brighter days. They're coming. They're coming, baby. I know it.
I see nothing but storm clouds ahead. <laughs> hey, for Andy Robb, I'm Ken Prell. Thanks so much for listening. We are the Philly Hockey Guys. We'll see you. <laughs> I've got nothing. I literally have nothing. <laughs> no, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs>